All right, at the top of the page, let's define a function first. So the top left box, it says a function in which each a function is a relation, excuse me. So it's a set of ordered pairs, so it can be a graph, it can, you can see the mapping diagrams, you can see a table, in which each domain element is, is paired with exactly one range element. So that means no two x values can repeat. If you see repeating x values, and we'll see what that looks like on a graph, it's not a function. So the only thing that's going to change is I'm going to give you a set of ordered pairs or something like you saw day one, and I'm going to ask you, is it a function? So the example here to the right that is a function, if you take a look at each one of your x values, they don't repeat. It's 0, 3, negative 1, negative 5. So you didn't hear me say one of those twice. And the next example, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 5, you see that the zeros do repeat. So that's why it's not a function, okay? And keep in mind just the language again. y equals x squared minus 3, that equation is the same as f of x. f of x and y mean the same thing, okay? So f of x, that's how you read it, that's the function notation. So now instead of saying y equals, we'll be saying f of x, g of x, p of x, m of x, whatever it is that they're going to name the function. So our vertical line test, so looking at the graphing piece, okay, it says the graph represents a function when any vertical line intersects the graph in only one spot, okay? Can only intersect the graph once. The graph does not represent a function when any vertical line intersects the graph in more than one point. So to the right, we're going to take a look at just a picture and then we'll look at some equations. This is a function because anywhere you draw a vertical line, it will only touch it in one spot. A sideways parabola, when you draw the line, it will intersect it twice, which is more than once. Okay, so I'm going to turn to a slide that just has some equations. So we need to be able to look at the graphs of those. So you can be given the picture or the equation. So looking at these equations, relation, which one of these is not a function? So let's take a moment to sketch each one of these. Each one, if you're going to type them in your calculator, needs to be in the form y equals. So we don't need to, you can type this in your calculator, we don't need to sketch the x and y axes. Bottom line is when it's x to the first power, it's what type of function? Linear. Is a line always going to be a function? So it's a function if it's like this, because the vertical line always crosses it once. It's a function if it is like this, so if it has a positive or negative slope, so if it's slanted, will a horizontal line always be a function? Does the vertical line only intersect at once? Yep. But what about a vertical line? If I draw a vertical line, does it only touch that vertical line once? No. So this is not a function. So as long as the line is slanted or horizontal, we're okay. And this is a slanted line. The only time it's vertical is an x equals line. Any y equals is horizontal or slanted. So solve this for y. If I get y by itself by subtracting 5, we have x minus 5 equals 3, or 3y, divide by 3. And you have, if you actually divide it, one-third x minus five-thirds. It's a line, there's no x squared, so that's still a function. So I want you to take a minute, this one here, let's skip that uh, minute. This is already in the form y equals. What's this graph? x squared minus nine, what does it look like? A v-shape, a line, a parabola. From the origin, is it up or down? Down nine. Is a parabola a function? Does the vertical line always touch it once? Yeah, so it must be this one. Why is this one not a function? 
So if I erase everything that I have and actually solve that for y, so x equals y squared plus 4x minus 5, move the 5 over becomes x plus 5 equals y squared minus 4x, or plus rather. Subtract the 4x, we have y squared equals negative 3x plus 5. How do you undo a square? To isolate y, how do I get rid of that degree 2? Radical. Take the square root. Gets rid of it, but then you have what goes out front? Nope. So let's graph this on your calculator. The square root of negative 3x plus 5. Type that in with me so you know how to type it in for your quiz. The square root of negative 3x plus 5. Remember your radical functions from ninth grade? Square root negative 3x plus 5 graph. It looks like that. Is that a function? Vertical line, touch only ones? Yes, but we actually don't have the whole thing. What we're missing from the note page is this plus and minus. Anytime you take the square root, think of the quadratic formula, completing the square. You need the plus or minus out front, so this is really y equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3x plus 5. So I'm going to go back to the graph. I don't need to type the second line in. All this second line is going to give you is the bottom half. Can't write on the board. Maybe I'm going to have to type it in. It's going to give you the bottom half of that parabola. So negative square root of negative 3x plus 5 graph. Does that pass the vertical line test? No. So the relation that was not a function is this one right here. Okay? So you, it's always good to see the graph, so you can easily look at the vertical line test. If you're given equations, put them in the calculator so you know. Okay? All right, the next part. The next part of the table, the next table we have, says parent functions. So that means these all pass the vertical line test. If you take a look at each one of your graphs, if you were to draw a vertical line anywhere, they all pass the vertical line test. So they are all functions. Okay? So this is a constant. It just means the number doesn't change. So this is y equals something. Your linear, absolute value, quadratic, and your cubic. So the rule is just going to be f of x equals, I'm just going to let c represent the number. The constant is c. So remember, I'm not saying y equals 3 anymore. It's now f of x equals 3. Linear, okay, this is f of x equals x. If you want to write because this graph is y equals x. So this is really y equals 3. But as a function, it's written with the f of x. Absolute value, the parent function, this is really y equals the absolute value of x, so now changing it to f of x equals the absolute value of x. And this is y equals x squared because it's quadratic, so now we're going to see f of x equals x squared, and this is f of x equals x cubed. Let's approach the domain like your quiz. Okay, so I was working with someone after school yesterday, and this is how I suggested you do it. All of these graphs, whenever you have to write the domain and range, which will be part two on your quiz, always identify which ones have a domain of all real numbers. Okay, so look at all those graphs. Which graphs stretch all the way across the x-axis? You just say yes or no. Does this constant function? Yes. Linear? Yes. Absolute value? Quadratic? Cubic. Does that stretch all the way across? So as it goes down, it's going a little bit out, right? It gets farther and farther away, so it will. All of these, let's draw an arrow, all have a domain of all real numbers. So on your quiz, the domain for any line that's horizontal or slanted, any parabola that's right side up, Okay, would this, bless you, would this parabola have the same domain all real numbers? 
Yes, so if it's upside down, does this V have a domain all real numbers? Yes, just because it's upside down. So right side up, upside down, absolute value equations, quadratics, those all have a domain of all real numbers. Now what about the range though? The range of this, we talked about this in the warm up, this is just y such that y equals 3. Or maybe it was the homework assignment. This range is all real numbers. Getting rid of the green graph is that domain all real numbers? Does it stretch all the way across the y-axis? Nope, it only goes from here 0 and up. Same with the parabola. So both of these next two graphs have the same range if you want to highlight those. The range is y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And the last one, does the graph stretch all the way across the y-axis? It has one arrow going up, another arrow going down. Will that stretch all the way across the y-axis? Yes. So this is all real numbers. I want you to take a minute. Okay, so I'm going to pause. I want you to look at those functions below. Do they pass the vertical line test? It's a function if no two x values repeat. So take a look at 1, 2, and 3. Which of the following is a function? So I'm looking at 1, 2, and 3. 1 is not a function. So if you had to explain, so if you draw a vertical line right here with the explanation part, so I'm going to add explain because you'll have to on your quiz, and I want to show you how. This is not... And all you have to tell me is one x value that repeats. So what's the x value that's repeating? Negative 1. So um, the x value of negative 1 repeats. What about the next one? Is number 2 a function? No. Um, the only x value that repeats here is the, if you draw the vertical line, negative 2. So the x value of negative 2 repeats. And 3 we said was, or is a function, because no two x values repeat. If I did this, would it still be a function? No. Good page, because this is really, if I just look at that 1, it's the point 1, 4, and now 1, 3. So if there's ever a double arrow, an arrow coming from your domain, or two arrows coming from the domain, that means it's not a function. All right, on the back page, all of the functions below have the same domain. What is the domain again? X is such that, woo x such that it's an element of all real numbers. Have your calculators handy, okay? There's not much to write on this page. We're going to fill out the table, but there are some issues with some of these functions. So take a look at the pictures, for instance. Are those pictures or those graphs stretching all the way across the x-axis? If you look at these graphs here. They're not covering the whole x-axis. So we say that they have a restricted domain, more or less, okay? Or the domain is not all real numbers, okay? So the case one where this happens, it's breaking away from 0, okay? Right here is x equals 0. The reason why we don't have the graph above x equals 0 for case 1 is when we have a fraction, in a fraction, okay, your denominator cannot be 0. So this must be the graph, or is the graph, of f of x equals 1 over, um, I'll say, x. Can be 2 over x. Okay, the important thing is, is the bottom can't be 0. So the restriction, or the domain, 
would be this. That's it. What's the range? We don't ever talk about the range in this column or this uh, table, but what would be the range? The graph's not touching the x-axis, but is it ever touching the y-axis? Is it stretching along the whole y-axis? So it's coming in, right? Here's the y-axis right here. It's coming in, it's getting close, it's getting close, but is it going to cross it? No, it's going to come right up and go right beside it. And then here it's coming up, it won't touch it, and then, or you can look at it coming this way, and then it goes down, it won't touch it. Will you ever have, so this is a fraction, can you ever divide by any number and get zero? Your f of x is y. If you take any number, can you divide by another number? Well, if this is a 1, can you divide 1 by anything and get 0? When's the only time you can get a fraction equal to 0? When 0 is where? The only time you can get 0 is when you actually have a 0 divided by some number. So that's why the graph never touches the y-axis, OK? Um, so down here, we'll fill in the rest of this column because the denominator of zero results in an undefined fraction. Fraction's undefined. So to find the domain, set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Okay? Next case, do you remember what that is from Math 9 or even the warm-up we did last class? How do I get just, or even what we did on the front page, how do you get just half of a parabola? You don't have the negative. That would be the bottom, right? But the positive was f of x equals what? A radical, right? So when you have just that part of the curve, that means that it was f of x equals a radical. So let's go back to radicals. Over here, x is negative. So let's say you took the square root of, let's make it easy, 1, 2, 3, square root of negative 4. I plug negative 4 in for x. What's the square root of negative 4? 2i. It's imaginary. So radicals can't be negative if I want to graph it in a real plane. So case 2, there's a problem when we have a function that it's a radical. Okay? The domain restriction is that it has to be greater than or equal to zero because we don't want, okay, an imaginary number. So a negative radicand gives us an imaginary number. So we set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and solve for x. Last one is a combination between the two, okay? It looks just like number one, okay? But I don't have this part right here, okay? So the last one is when we have a radical in the denominator, right? So we know it can't be negative because it would be imaginary, but we also know that we can't divide by zero. So this has to be greater than zero. So case three is when it's a fraction and has a radical in the denominator. Okay? And the reason, okay, is because if it was zero, it'd be undefined. And if it was negative, we'd have an imaginary answer, and I want it to be real. So to find the domain, we just set it greater um, than zero. So let's do the back a little bit different. This actually will go by quick. Um, but before we actually look at those, if you take a look at the graph in that table, um, it breaks away, and it breaks away at the line x equals 2. That line is called an asymptote. Okay? An asymptote is a line that a curve approaches, but it never reaches. Okay? It's used to represent the undefined values of a function. 
So type this in your calculator. This is this curve. f of x is 1 over x minus 2. Type it in the calculator. y equals 1 divided by, put the x minus 2 in parentheses. This is a short way to do these questions is using the calculator. 1 over x minus 2. Go to your table. What happens when x is 2? What do you see there? You see the word error. That's going to tell you when you at where your domain is. So for every other x value, so if I scroll over, we're not going to keep holding the up and down button, but for every other x value, if you do scroll up and down, you will have no errors for y for any other number but 2. And that's because if we go back to our notes, when x is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So we end up with 1 over 0, which we can't have because it's an undefined fraction. Okay, so let's type some of these in, but let's first identify all of the questions that are fractions, and let's focus on the cases. So case one, which ones are fractions? We find the domain. This will go by quick when you get the hang of it. Find the domain, and then verify it on the calculator. So number one's a fraction, right? That's case one. To find your domain, look at just the denominator. Some of you can see this. X can't be what number? If you go back to your, go, if I go back to this page, your domain for a fraction is always going to look like X can't be something because it'd be an undefined fraction. So in the first one, X can't be what number? Negative 7. That's the answer. To make it a domain, just put the X such that in your set brackets. If you can't see that, Take the x plus 7, set it equal to 0, and solve. That's it. Let's do all the fractions together so it's the same process. Number 2 is a fraction. Can you see right away, some of you can, don't yell it out, what value for x is going to make the denominator 0? So my domain is going to be x not equals something because it's a fraction, and the denominator can't ever be 0. Summer? Negative 3 is right. If you can't see it, set the 2x plus 6 equal to 0, subtract the 6 and divide by 2, and we get negative 3. Add your such that line x and set brackets, and we're done. Any other fractions on the page? Any other case ones? Oh, number 3. I'm not looking down. Number 3. Okay, this, can any of you tell with the radical what's going to be uh, the values of x that make it 0? This one might be tricky. So let's actually take that set equal to 0 and factor. If it's an x squared, you're going to have two numbers. What are the factors of negative 6 that combine to a negative 1? Negative 3 and 2, good. So minus 3 plus 2 equals 0. So that means x equals, for this factor, 3, for this factor, negative 2. So that's my restriction. x cannot equal um, 3 and negative 2. So type that in. We haven't typed it in the calculator. I'm going to pause and then start recording again. But here in class, we're going to type that in. Now let's look at example number four, which was case two on the previous page. What's the issues with radicals? Yeah. I'm going to say that again. I'm trying to pick you up on the mic. Dylan? has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? can't be negative, so you can just simply say it can't be negative because we'll get imaginary. So this x, and this is probably the easiest one you'll see, you only have to focus in on the radical. So if you want to box it, you can ignore the rest. This x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and we're done. There's nothing to solve. Okay? Under the radical here, though, 
is an x minus 1. So we still set it greater than or equal to 0, but the x is not the only thing that's on the left side. So to finish, we have to add the 1, and it's x is greater than or equal to 1. So we're going to pause, type that in on your calculator. All right, last one, that's a radical. So this is case two, so I want to take what's underneath and set it greater than or equal to zero. When you add the 15 over, you get a positive 15. So it's 5x greater than or equal to 15 divided by 5x is greater than or equal to 3. So that's the domain. So if you go on your calculator, I can just sketch out what it's going to look for 3, 4. Actually, let's start with some numbers less than 3, so let's go 1, 2, 3, 4. For those numbers less than 3, you should see an error. For 3 and else, you're going to see some, 3 and greater, rather, you're going to see some numbers there. Okay? Last case, which was case number 3 on the previous page, if it's just a radical, it just has to be positive. But the issue with a radical in the denominator is that it has to be, so just focus here, it has to be greater than zero. It can't be zero or else you'd have an undefined fraction. So subtract the four and x is greater than negative four. So the domain is x such that x is greater than negative four. Last one is x squared minus 9 greater than 0. So we have to factor x plus 3, x minus 3, but this is good for the final exam review. The two roots are negative 3 and 3. Does anyone remember how we solved the quadratic inequality? We had to put those numbers on a number line. So if you put them on a number line, negative 3 and 3, and you had to test a number inside and outside. So can we test 0? Because 0 is easy. So if I test 0, I end up with 0 squared minus 9, which is what? Is negative 9 greater than 0? No. So that's false in here. Let's test 10. So is 10 squared, which is 100, minus 9? Well, that's definitely greater than 0. 100 minus 9 is 91, so this is true. So I want to shade outside. So the answer to this one is x such that we have x less than or equal to negative 3. Whoops, no equal to. I never put my circles. It has no equal to line here, so therefore that means open, open. x less than negative 3 or x greater than 3.